You're watching the Brother Henry and You Show. Engaging. Informative. Inspirational. Enjoy today's program. Welcome everybody to the Brother Henry and You Show. I'm your guest host, Derek Day, and I have an exciting message for you today. And I'm praying that it, that it blesses you. Now, you might be wondering, why am I so dressed up? Well, because Brother Henry is so handsome that I have to do something to kind of, you know, fit in. So I decided to dress up a little bit so that I could kind of come up to the Henry level. Anyway, I've picked a song that goes along with what I'm going to talk about today. And this is from one of my favorite artists of all time. I love this guy. I love his music. I love what he's represented socially. And he has ministered to me. David Bowie changes. Yeah. Ch -ch 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 changes. Yeah. I love the idea about change, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about change. Change. What does it mean? What does it mean to change? Well, I mean, there, there, there is a dictionary definition of change, and I'm not going to get into that. And there, there are also social definitions of change, and I'm not really going to get into that. What I want to get to is something that's like a real working definition of change, and that's to be different in one moment from the next. And if I could quote a Bible verse, Romans 12 and 2, it says, to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. At some point, if you are going to move forward in life, you have to make the choice to change because the change mind is not the end of it. See, that's just the beginning. That's the catalyst. That's the genesis, okay? When you change your mind, your thoughts will change. Your heart will change. Your speech will change. What you see will change will change and what you hear, how you hear it, will change. And I really picked this because there are a lot of people, a lot of my friends in uh, in circles of preaching and teaching and so on and so forth, that they're going through changes. They're going through a metamorphosis. And, and watch this. The Bible tells us that we're new creatures recreated in Christ Jesus. In other words, we're something that never existed before. And not only are we something that never existed before, we're something that never existed before moment to moment. In other words, what you are this moment is not what you're going to be in the next. Now, for someone who doesn't really have great perception, you may seem the same, but if you're going through a process of renewing, then that means that there's something different about you at each point on your life's timeline as you go. That is so amazing and so incredible, but this is something that you have to do because growth demands change. You cannot change if you're stagnant. You cannot change if you're still. You have to be moving in thought. You have to be moving in mind. You have to be moving in speech. You have to be moving in hearing. You have to be moving in vision. You have to be in motion. And watch this. Bodies in motion tend to stay in motion. So as long as we're in motion, we're in a position, a posture of change. Now, why is all of this important? Because for centuries, religion has taken hold of things and determined how things should be. But in John 10 and 10, where it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, we've been taught that that thief is the devil, and that is not the thief, the devil. 
the thief is religion. The thief is the, are the structures, the hierarchies, the principles, the, all of these things, the powers that dictate what defines morality. And all of that has to change. And listen, if you go back and look in the, in the creation account, I ask people all the time, in the creation account, what couldn't God do? In other words, what were God's limitations? What, what are the things that God could do? Uh, could, could God not speak? Could God not hear? Could God not form? What, what is it that God couldn't do? Was God constrained, restrained, or uh, otherwise you know, encumbered in any way? No, God was absolutely and totally free. He was a free being. He is free in everything. God can do anything that he wants to do. Now, there are certain things that God will not do, and I believe that God will not lie. And God will not violate the spirit of his essence. In other words, God is love, so anything that comes out of God is going to be love. But if he takes that as the beginning, how does he create us? He creates us to be free. We are created to have the same absolute freedom that God has. Because it takes freedom to create. You cannot create in bondage. You might come up with a clever solution or maybe uh, something that remedies a temporary problem, but it's not creative. It's formed of necessity and not out of love. See, creativity, true creativity is born of love. And in order to have creativity, you have to change. Change is essential. See, this is why when Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, he was in the company of the law and the prophets. He was there with Moses and Elijah. But it said something happened to Jesus that his countenance, his being, his, his visage changed. And, and that he became glowing, that his raiment, his clothing became white. Something changed at that moment. And then Daddy God speaks from heaven and says, this is my beloved son. See, the disciples, Peter, James, and John, they're looking at this and they say, hey, we got it all right here. We got the law, we got the prophets, and we got grace personified. Man, let's build some tabernacles. Let's build some temples to honor this, this moment. Let's, let's just dwell with this because this is so awesome. But God said, no, this is not awesome, guys. What I want you to see is what you saw before has now passed. This is changed in favor of something new. Now I'm showing you something that's even greater, something that's even more profound, something that's going to change your life. Because see, the law and the prophets could only affect the external man. But here's Jesus showing up and showing us how the internal man changes. You see that? In other words, on the Mount of Transfiguration, not only did Jesus change, but you and I change. Humanity changed at that moment because Daddy God speaks and says, this, pointing to Jesus, is my beloved son. Hear him. In other words, all that you heard before about the law, stop listening to it. Discard it. I, I'm, 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 I'm waiting for the torches and pitchforks on this one, but discard it. The law is kabula, and I'm not going to explain what that is. Look it up. It's nonsense. And that, that is what God was saying. The prophets, nonsense, nothing there for you, nothing to see here. Here's my son. Here's my earthly representation of me. This is whom I'm sending to, for you to look at and for you to pattern and model yourself after, to hear him. That is so freaking exciting. And when I look at people like Brother Henry, and I look at people like Kyle Butler, and I look at people like Catherine Toon, and I see change. I see something happening. I, you know, I, I hate to use this church cliche, but I see a shift. <laughs> Sometimes when I see a shift, I see it minus the F. <laughs> That's, but 
in this particular case, I see a shift. I see a shifting in how we're thinking. I see a shifting in how we're processing. And I see a shifting in how we're preaching. This is amazing stuff. And, and it's like, watch this. We're not just hearing things from scripture, but we're actually hearing the voice of God. See, this is what God wants. The, the Bible is not supposed to be the end all. It's not supposed to be the final reference. The Bible is a starting point. The Bible is the place from, it is the springboard from which we jump into the deep end of the pool of the things of God. It's not, the party is not on the, on the jumping board, y'all. The party is in the pool. And, and if you're not willing to get in the pool, if you just stay on the diving board, it's never going to be fun. But if you jump off into the pool, man, there's the full run of the pool. Do you understand? And, and in order to get from the diving board to the pool, you have to take that leap of faith. In other words, you have to get airborne to get from the diving board to the pool. There is a leap that has to take place to get you from there to here. If you just simply stay in the Bible, then what happens is you're staying on the springboard and you're never gonna experience the cool, wet excitement of the pool of the depth of the Godhead, the fullness of daddy, of son, and of Holy Spirit. You'll miss that if you are unwilling to change. Listen, you can't go fishing simply by sticking to the shore. You have to launch out into the deep. There is some place that you have to go. There is something that you have to change. And, and listen, if, if all you're hearing is one thing over and over again, and this is the only thing that you're hearing, you're not growing. You are going to have to hear things that challenge you, things that push the envelope, because watch this, either you push the envelope or the envelope will succumb you, seal you, sign you, and send you. It will, it will completely fold you up and mail you off because you're not changing. If you, listen, change is important. I can't stress this. You have to take what you've learned and expand upon it. See, that's why Paul said, being transformed by the renewing of our mind, not the renewal. Renewal would be simply to do it one time, once and done, but in reality, the renewing has to go on constantly because you have to constantly be changing because you have to constantly be growing. God never created us to sit still in one ideological perspective. And, and here's the thing. Now, I get this all the time because people will say to me, well, Derek, you don't listen to me. You don't listen to what I have to say. Well, I'm not listening to you because you are where I've been. See, the thing is, I don't, I'm not learning anything from the rearview mirror of my life. And you shouldn't either. That's why the windshield of the car is 10 times the size of the rearview mirror because where you're going is way more important than where you've been. And, and if you've already been in legalism, if you've already been in religion, if you've already been under uh, judgment and condemnation, if you've already been through those things, then that is not where you set camp. You don't make camp where you've been. You make camp where you're going. And, and always, always, always you want to be thinking about how to move ahead, how to move forward. I cannot tell you how wonderful it has been for me in the last two or three years because there have been people that have come into my life that have, have challenged me to think bigger. You know, it's like people like Simon Yap, uh, you know, people like Kyle Butler, people like Lynn Bennett, uh, people like Michael Porter, uh, people like Mike Zinker, th th these, uh, Don Keithley, I could just go on and on, uh, Roy Richmond, um, Kay Fairchild, I could just go on and on about all these people that, that they have spoken things into my life or spoken things that, that have caused me to rethink where I, where I am and to push the envelope. You know, the, the people, these are the people you want what if people in your life. See, the what if people are the positive people. They're the ones that are like, well, what, what, what if I go to the edge and I step off and I fly? What if 
I can, I can build higher. What if I can go deeper? What if I could go broader? These are the people that you want around your life because you want the people who are going to stimulate growth. And they stimulate growth by forcing you to consider change. It, this is so very fundamental. And, and what I love about the Brother Henry and You show is that he is constantly looking for people who push the envelope. Listen, either you move the needle of life or the needle is going to move you. And if the needle moves you, it is never going to move you in the direction it wants to go because the needle always wants to find the resting point. It wants to find a stopping point. But if you push the needle, you're moving it forward. And watch this. It is, the more you push the needle forward, the further along in the awesomeness of life, the awesomeness of God, the awesomeness of humanity, the awesomeness of nature, the awesomeness of the universe that you are going to experience. And that's what we're created for, y'all. We're created to experience awesomeness and everything. Listen, there, there, in God, there is no lack. There is no pain. There is no suffering. Yeah, they, these things happen in the earth, but guess what? We're not created to experience them. What we're, we're created to be like God. We are created to experience his attributes in the natural that he experiences in the supernatural. In other words, I'll take it a step further that we're created to be multidimensional beings. We're supposed to be able to look into the supernatural and see what is there. We're supposed to be able to look into the God space and see what is there and to be able to pull from that into our reality in order to change how we live. I can't tell you how much this has transformed my life because I had reached a point where I, I got stuck. I, I, I got to a point where I said that this, well, I guess this is as far as grace goes. And, and here's the thing, you know, people will say, well, you know, you're, you're taking this grace thing into secular humanism and all this other stuff. Listen, let me tell you something, that the whole of all isms and, and idioms and all these other things, do you realize that God didn't create any limitations for our thinking? Do you think that God wants us to just simply be bound to a book that was that was written, edited, and canonized by men? Or do you think that he wants us to be moved by his spirit? And, and if that spirit leads us to different things, listen, I, I, I'm all about, you know, astral projection, and I'm all about quantum physics, and I'm all about, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, spiritual transformation and all this other stuff, you know, uh, spirit, spirit travel. I mean, listen, all of these things, what's wrong with that? God gave us the ability to do these things, and he's given us the authority to do these things. But as long as we're stuck in religion and we're stuck in, in what we believe that, that's, uh, that's captured in 66 books that some men decided is, is the thing, you're going to be stuck. Now, I'm, listen, before anybody says anything, they're saying, oh, Derek is saying throw away the Bible. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that that is a good starting point and it is a good reference point and it is it is there, there is a lot of good in there but there's also a lot in there that if you're paying attention that there's a lot in there that you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed to follow and 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 so that when you hear these things it, listen the bible will tell you about legalism and why you're not supposed to follow it and if you pay attention to that, you won't follow it. You'll keep going. You'll keep moving forward. You'll go deeper into the grace of God. You'll get off the dive board of religion and you'll get into the pool of the Godhead and you'll grow and you'll learn. That's so amazing. And that's what I want you guys to embrace today is I want you to embrace the amazing. I want you to embrace the astounding. I want you to embrace the incredible, the phenomenal, the quantum, because this all requires change and this change begins with the change of your mind and how do you change your mind change what you're looking at if you can't change what you're looking at change your perspective on what you see 
Because one thing that if you're not seeing things in love, you're seeing things incorrectly. The second thing is, is what is coming in through your ear gate? What are you listening to? Because if you're listening to anything that holds you down, that, that demands you do anything, that demands that you adhere to any standards, anything like that, that is nonsense and it will not allow you to change. And if you're hearing that, then cover your ears and reject that until you hear something better. Or if possible, change your perspective on what you hear. Because here's the thing, we all look at the Bible, but we all see through a glass darkly. In other words, we see things differently. So maybe you can look at the same thing and see it differently. The next thing is, is that you have to make sure what gets into your heart, what is moving your spirit. If it's something that, that causes you to move forward, it causes you to grow, and it causes you to love more, to share the love of God, then that's changing, that's catalyzing, and that's good. But if it's something that causes you to harden your heart, to turn your back on your fellow man, to ignore the plight of the oppressed and things like that, then you know that that's not love and you can reject it. And finally, what are you speaking? What are you saying to others that when, when people say something to you, what is your response? Is your response positive? Is your response loving? Is your response edifying? Is it encouraging? If it isn't, then that means you're not speaking the right words and you have to think, you have to go back to your thinking, back to your hearing, back to your heart, and then to your mouth to make sure that the connection is there and you're speaking what is good, what is lovely, what is pure, those are the things that indicate the presence of positive change in your life. And that's pretty much what I have for you today. I pray that it blesses you. Remember, connect with Brother Henry on the Brother Henry and You Show. And you can also connect with me on DerekDay.com and, and everywhere else that I am, you can find out from that. Go to DerekDay.com and you can find that out. But I want to say to Brother Henry Harris, my brother, I love you so much. Thank you for this opportunity, and I thank you all for listening. And I want to close, as I always do, by telling you that God loves you, and so do I. You are loved and valued. Stay blessed. Hi, my name's Heather. Thank you for watching the Brother Henry and You show today. If you've enjoyed the show today, visit us at facebook.com backslash the Brother Henry and You Show. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day.